Welcome to another episode of CHP Sports with Kenny and Anthony. I am one of our two co-hosts, Anthony DeRazio, and I am joined, of course, by my co-host, Kenny Barber. Kenny, how are you doing today? Good, good. I'm glad we got our technical difficulties worked out. <laughs> yes, yes. Today, today's uh, the start time of our recording was marred by technical difficulties on my end. Poor Kenny had to wait around as I was messing around with technology, unfortunately. And I'm a huge uh, tech, I'm a huge tech guy, so it was yeah. big help on my end. Make it work, human. Yeah. Make it work. Uh so we, we're coming off a pretty interesting sports week. Lots of cool stuff we can talk about. We purposely did not actually discuss what we we're going to talk about on the show beforehand to sort of get our live reactions. So I, I guess I'll start with two bigger NBA stories coming out of the weekend. Um, injuries and ejections. So we have Kyrie Irving getting Bruce Bowen by Kevin Durant. Or no. No, who? No, Gian- Giannis. Giannis Antetokounmpo, uh, Bruce Bowen him, stepped underneath him as he sh- went for a layup, and Kyrie landed right on his foot and rolled his ankle. Uh, and then the other uh, big story, I guess, from the set of games was the Joker being ejected with a flagrant two penalty. So, Kenny, let's get your thoughts on either one of those or both, however you want to start us off here. Yeah, so the the Kyrie things, I think it's huge, right? Because they're already down Harden, right? They were, and they were playing well without him, but you still have Kyrie, you still have KD, you got, you got Blake Griffin, you got uh, Joe Harris, right? They, they still got some firepower there. And I think enough to, like, win a six-game type series with – with the Bucs, uh, I still think, barring great shooting nights, the Bucs are going to struggle. Uh, they, they only right. won that one game over the weekend because Brooklyn was shooting terrible, right? I think it was like, who could shoot worse? And they squeaked it out at the end, and they got a win. Uh, you know, but now this this happens, and the Bucs pretty much dominated the, the whole entire game throughout last night, and Kyrie's out now. Now it's... It's not looking good if he's not coming back. Uh, I haven't heard today how long he's going to be out, but um, yeah, that's uh, that could change a lot. And now you're looking at like the Sixers are up now. Embiid seems to be okay. If Brooklyn gets knocked out, I think Sixers' chances improved greatly to, to make the finals. Because um, yeah. I'm still not sold on Giannis in the playoffs. Uh, he's still not really won anything. Not that the Sixers have, but uh, you know they have they have been pretty damn close a couple years back against the Raptors. So I the Sixers seem a lot more complete to me, and more yeah. con- and I think more importantly, they're more consistent. I feel like the Bucks are real streaky. Like if they get rolling, they're very good, and their three point shot. I mean, for anyone in the league, if their three point shots going in, it's a, it's a big deal. But I feel like they seem like streaky shooters on that team. Yeah, uh, from what I've seen, and Giannis. I mean, Giannis can't shoot the three, so you have to find ways to get him. You know, close to the basket, you know, and, and effectively the, the book on how to guard that is written. You just basically make a picket fence and say, hey, you can't drive it. We're going to force you to shoot it from outside. Yeah, and then just foul him if you have to because he can't shoot yeah. foul shots either. <laughs> yeah, so it's it's an interesting – for as good as he is, you know, and I'm sure that's, a, that's something – he's still very young, obviously. And yeah. That's something that he'll – you know, I'm sure in five years we'll be talking about. Remember when Giannis couldn't shoot? You know, yeah. <laughs> Well, he, he's definitely it. getting better, but you know, the, his his whole game is taking it to the rack, and because he's so athletic and and long, he gets there a lot of times, right? But you can see Brooklyn is making it a point to keep him from driving and getting in the lane, and uh, it's made it. I mean, he's still getting his points, but again, he, you foul the guy, he's he's shooting really bad. He's getting timed out of free throws. I heard a guy yeah, counting. I saw that. Yeah, I heard a guy counting last night every time he would step up, and it was going. And they're not calling it now for some reason. Um, in the last game, he was 12, 13 seconds each time, and they still weren't calling it. Somebody was counting out loud. You could hear him. I don't know if it was a coaching staff of Brooklyn or what, but uh, I found that I found that funny. Um, yeah, it's definitely turned into the most interesting series in the playoffs because every other one I feel like is not decided. But I mean, the Suns just swept, right? Uh, they look great. Uh, <laughs> They're, they're looking like a dangerous team. I mean, the Suns look very good, but also yeah. I don't know if Denver could have looked worse. Well, yeah, yeah little combo. Um, and now with, you know, 
on to the other point with uh, the Joker getting tossed. Now that series is a little more, I mean, it was 2-0 right now. It's just LA got a big win there by a lot too. They kind of blew them out. Um, so now does that become an interesting series? We'll see. Uh, are you talking about the Clippers series? Yeah. Okay. You said Joker, so he, oh, he's, wait, a, he's gone. Oh, he's, yeah, he did. Why did I say that? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so, so quick question on the Joker thing. Should, do you feel? Yeah. Did you see the foul? And do you think he should have been ejected for that? I did not see the foul. I only heard about it. I don't know. I always get the the Jazz and the Nuggets mixed up. So that's my apologies there. Um, I did not see it. Uh, I don't know what it looked like. I don't generally agree that lots of fouls are flagrant too. It's just because I'm a '90s basketball product where it was like, unless someone was bleeding. It was probably not a foul, um, <laughs> but I'm not unrealistic in you know in today's basketball world to know like okay that that was a foul you know or something like that. Yeah, I mean, I thought flagrant. So I watched the you know I saw the replay. I didn't even realize he got ejected because I I don't think I was paying much attention to that game. I think I flipped it on and the Suns were up by like 15 or something with like in the last fourth quarter or th- late in the third. I was like, well, this game is over. I didn't realize he was out. Like I think I left it on, but I wasn't paying enough attention where I even realized he was out. But you know, he, he it was on the his offensive end. He does like he misses a shot or like the rebound gets poked away. So he, he's clearly very upset. Yeah. And the the Suns guy gets the rebound in the corner, and Joker, you can tell he's like pissed, like super pissed, and he like loses emotions. He goes over and he just winds up and goes like this, but he hits his hand hits all ball. Hits the ball. Like he's clearly aiming for the ball. He clearly hits all ball with his hand. The problem is as he like hit goes through, the guy's head is like here so as he goes like this his like bicep like kind of hits the guy in the side of the head yeah and so it was one of those things like to me the flagrant twos are like when guys are going for layups and like someone just pushes them like where it's clearly they're not even making an effort for the ball or you know they they go and they you know they have no shot at hitting the like blocking it they just like whack down on the guy's shoulder or something it's like okay you're not even like that wasn't even an attempt really at the ball you can tell Whereas this one yeah this one he you can see he clearly aims at the ball and he hits his hand hits all ball like, if he doesn't hit him with his bicep, it's not even a foul. You know, so I can see with the windup, I'm like, ah, flagrant. Like, I can see flagrant one, right? Because you could tell, you know, I guess he shouldn't have hit him in the face with his bicep or whatever. But I don't know. Like, you got the la- reigning league MVP in an elimination game. Like, and, and that, that, honestly, that shouldn't even matter. Like, anyone does that. If they hit all ball and they're clearly aiming for the ball, even if they're pissed, like, they hit the ball. Right. It wasn't to me, it wasn't like he raped across his arms or anything. Like he hits all ball. So I don't know. I, I felt like it was a gross overstatement. And like, especially, you know, like, what was it? I don't know if it was that game or the Bucks game yesterday where the, the one guy catches like an elbow to the face. It was completely incidental. Right. The guy's going off a rebound. The other guy like goes Bucks like this game. by accident. Yeah. He was bleeding. Yeah. And he gets like <laughs> cracked across the head. He's bleeding. And it's like, okay, somehow this is not even not even a foul. Mm-hmm. And this other one where the guy gets grazed in the face. Now, he went down, but I think, he, honestly, it's hard to tell. I mean, if he gets hit inside the head, it's kind of hard to tell. Are you acting and playing it up, or are you, like, actually whacked? Because, like, if you get hit in the right spot, like, obviously you could go out. But, like, I don't know. For the way it looked, like, he got hit kind of hard with the bicep, but not where he should have been down for a long period of time. But, you know, I, I don't know. I was, I'm not the guy that got hit. You know, it's, I don't know. It just seemed... A flagrant two ejection seemed like an overstep for what it was. Like flagrant one, I would have agreed with. I've been like, yeah, flagrant one's fine there, you know. But flagrant two was, I don't know. Yeah, and anytime to like anytime you. Well, first off, let's just give me a round of applause for now getting the teams right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I said that way wrong because the Nuggets were playing the Suns and the Jazz are playing the Clippers. So I'm glad I got that figured out now. I don't know why I mix those two teams up. I always do it. It's okay. I do. I do it with certain yeah. teams. Um, but yeah, so so when you, like you said, I think the biggest thing is like reading the room, right? The, you still need to read a room as a referee. Uh, okay, if he if he squats the guy in the head purposely, pushes him on the ground, throws him from midair, <laughs> closes him out, you know, causes him to break his his ankle, or you know, okay. But this if this seemed like a basketball play, right? He he squats at the ball, hits the ball, and then just kind of follows through, hits him in the head. You know, read the room. It's the NBA. It's the last or, – or, or excuse me, it's it's the MVP. It's the last game possibly of the series. And now you just threw out the biggest piece of their 
their entire team, yeah. to, you know, to end the series, basically. Uh, you know, even if they win that game, do they come back from 3-0? Probably not. Probably not. Yeah, but still, I mean, it, it, I already hate missing certain players from the playoffs because they lost. So now we're tossing out other players. Uh, so, yeah, then maybe – and I'll have to watch the the actual play um, after we're done here just to give a true opinion. But from what, how you're explaining it, it looks like – Sounds like it was a basketball play where he went. Yeah, I mean, he definitely winds up. Like, and I think that's yeah. that's the reasoning they gave is because he had to wind up and follow through. But and there I mean, was another know. game uh, <laughs> earlier in the playoffs where a guy wound up and and hit the yeah. guy in the head, and they didn't kick him out of the game. I don't think. But yeah, or, or it's not even a flagrant one. They'll like just yeah. call it a common foul. Like, if it, especially if it's like one of the bigger guys getting hit, like LeBron. Or, yeah, yeah. I'm using LeBron because LeBron gets beat up a lot, but you know, LeBron <laughs> or Giannis or those guys like. To follow them, they're so strong. People will wind up and follow them, but somehow it's that's still a basketball play. Yeah. It's like, okay. Well, this, you can't, this, you can't the, have it both ways. The one I'm referring to was that they, I think they called it a flagrant, if I remember correctly, flagrant one. But that was it. But they said because he wound up to do it, right? That was why they called it that. But at yeah, a flagrant two, at ejection, that seems a little excessive, especially again. And you know, not that you want to treat the MVP any different, but. Again, kind of read the room there. People are watching to watch him play, right? Yeah, or just understanding that it's an elimination game, so yeah. emotions are going to be higher for everyone. Like, even if it's a role player, like, understand, like, okay, it is an elimination game for this team. Like, yes, the guy lost his cool, but he, he did go for the ball still. He did yeah. kind of get the guy inside the, the head, but he wasn't aiming for that clearly. You know, it, I agree. Like, okay, you know, if it's, a, if it's a February game, okay, I understand. Like, you're trying to send a message like, hey, guys, yeah. we really don't want you losing your, your cool. But, like... This is the playoffs. Emotions are going to be as high yeah. as they're ever going to be in that in that mid game. So, and in the same sense, with that, you know, Giannis closing out on Kyrie, right? That way, yeah. So I am kind of so I don't know the rules on that one as close. Like I know on a jump shooter, you can't do that. You can't step underneath a jump shooter. Yeah. I don't know if that still applies, like in the key. You know, I don't know if that like to me it seems like it should, but like you know, Kyrie goes up, and it's one of those where he's not like running in he's kind of like stationary and he like kind of jumps straight up yeah and Giannis kind of steps like right underneath him so it's it's the exact same situation in terms of you have a shooter going straight up and then you have someone sort of stepping underneath them you know Bruce Bowen you know make it make a guy afraid to shoot yeah. play and break you know because you're going to break his ankle if he lands on you uh, or twist it and that's exactly what happened so I was surprised not only that it I guess Dink it called a foul when I when I saw the replay. I was like, wow, that kind of he stepped right underneath him. But also that it didn't get like no one really talked about that. That was what happened. Like they're like, oh, Kyrie lands on Giannis's ankle. That was like what everyone said. I'm like, well, yeah, he lands on him because yeah. Giannis <laughs> steps right under like 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 Kyrie goes up and then Giannis is over here like steps like right underneath like into where Kyrie's gonna land. Yeah. It's like okay, like you can give the guy a spot to land. So and I don't know, like uh, almost like the defenseless receiver rule, right in the NFL, yeah. where he, of course he stepped on it. It was under his feet, right? That's that's what happens. Um, so, yeah, definitely uh, some discrepancies there with the calls, right? In two big games, two big situations with some megastars there, right? So, and it's definitely changing the series now for the Brooklyn series. Uh, yeah, for sure. It's going to, I mean, talk about a huge shift. I mean, maybe they go back home and win a game and maybe Kyrie comes back or, you know, if it's like a high ankle sprain or he might be out for a while. Um, and Harden's hamstring, who knows what's happening there. You know, I'm sure he wants to play, but who, who knows? You know, hamstrings are... Hamstrings are hamstrings. Yeah, just as touch and go as like the groin or the, the ankle. I mean, ankle injuries are tough in basketball. So tough. They are. I mean, I would say the good news about ankles, at least you can tape it up really tight, and that usually yeah. helps a lot more than like a hamstring where it's like, you know, I think everyone at some point is like tweet a hamstring. If you've played any sort of sport with sprinting involved. Yep. And uh, it's one of those things where you, you try and rehab it and then you come back and there's always that fear like, okay, you know, all right, 70% feels good. 80% feels good. 90% feels good. And then one day you just, you hit 95 and all of a sudden it, you know, tweaks again. And you're right. like, oh, you know, back to square. Almost, it feels like you're back to square one. So. Yeah. Uh, so it's going to be interesting for sure. Cool. Cool. Um, NCAA track and field. I think to me that was another big story from I guess the end of this past week. 
Uh, I was doing a play by play in the CHB athletes group for our, I guess the, was it Thursday? I guess Friday. Maybe it was Friday. It was the men's, the day of the most of the men's finals. I know Saturday I was, I was seeing family. So unfortunately I could not watch on Saturday when most of the women's finals were. So I have less to say on that. And I apologize to all of you out there. And that's really because I was with family. I was seeing family first time my, me and my immediate family had seen each other all together since Thanksgiving 2019. So that was uh, a lot of fun. And uh, so if they're watching it, cause I gave them the link to watch our show. So hopefully, you know, cheers to all of you guys. It was great seeing you. Yeah. I was away. So I didn't, I saw just what I could sports wise. Cause I was at a softball tournament. So it was like all day at the field. Oh, you. Actually yeah. playing sports. <laughs> well, just, co- just coaching and hanging out basically. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, Friday night, I, I try, I watched the Sixers game Saturday. I saw your updates in the group. So uh, I was trying to pay attention there. Yeah. So I, yeah. So my comments, I'm going to kind of limit just to what I saw for the track and field stuff, but I would say to me, you know, Joseph Fambele, you know, was like my, is my hero. He's my spirit animal. You know, he's, you know, so he's a sprinter for uh, the university of Florida, you know, extreme, his top end is so fast. Like he very big guy, like compared to other sprinters, like you compare him, to the LSU sprinter, whose name is of course um, Laird, uh, who's been winning most, who won the hundred, came back, you know, Laird won the hundred for LSU, very very fast, 100, 200 guy. He's been having a phenomenal, had a phenomenal coll- collegiate season this year. You know, but Laird's a lot smaller than Fonbelay, so Fonbelay, you know, is a taller guy. He's like kind of a stockier build, and uh, you know, so when he gets going, you know, his stride's enormous. We're talking about the length of his stride; it's like longer than Usain Bolt's stride was. When he gets, you know, full chat. So he looks like, to me, I, I compare him to a runaway freight train. And uh, he's hilarious, though, because his start is terrible. You know, if he, I, he's, he's, Joseph, if you're if somehow watching this video, I, I apologize. But, like, compared to other people, obviously your start's way better than whatever I would do or whatever Kenny would do. But compared to other top-end sprinters, you know, his start just is not very good. And I know it's something he's working on, but his, his top end's amazing. So the 100, he did not do, you know, he made the finals, but he didn't do great. And I forget what place he got. And then the 200, though, I looked at my wife because we were watching it together. I'm like, this guy, watch this guy. He's going to be, you know, he's my pick. He's going to be, when he comes off the turn, he'll be like nearly back and he's going to make it up on the, on the straightaway. And that's literally what he did. He, uh, you know, the race starts. He immediately stands straight up out of his blocks. Uh, so he starts terrible. <laughs> like, like the exact thing you're not supposed to do is what he does, you know? The guy, to, he was he was like lane seven, I want to say. And the guy who was inside was a Houston sprinter whose name I do not remember. He ended up getting third, the Houston guy. The Houston guy catches him in 10 meters on the curve, right? So the the the, the, the guy makes up the stagger like 15% of the way into the curve. It's like it's, it looks like the floor, you know, Joseph Fonbele is not going to be anywhere in, in the race, you know? And then he like, he runs it, I guess, I would say an acceptable turn. You know, I I don't think he runs a great turn. I think it's not even like that. You know, moderately good. Um, you know, because he comes off in the home stretch, and he's probably Fonbley is probably in like fourth or fifth coming into the home stretch. Um, and he just tracks everyone down and catches everyone right before the line, and you know, like a runaway freight fr- fr- train, and, and r- runs a nineteen nine five if I remember correctly. So he goes sub twenty with an atrocious like atrocious start. If if you're listening to this, and you're like, how bad could this guy start be? Go watch the video that you know the NCAA posted because his start is truly atrocious. I I honestly think if he got a great start, like if he learned how to start and could run learn to to run a decent curve, he goes sub nineteen five. Like I think he's losing like a half second. Like that's how bad his start is. If he if he can keep that top end on the straightaway. Which so in that sport is a lot, right? <laughs> yeah, no, I mean there's a I think I posted this in the CHP group uh, like a couple of months ago. And one of my favorite things in sports is, you know, what ifs the old, you know, if, if you could, if you looked at a specific event, you changed one thing in that event, like wh- how much different the outcome could potentially be, or like how would history change how you looked at someone. And one of my favorite what ifs is Johan Blake, a uh, sprinter for Jamaica, He's he's still active now. He still races. He's kind of fallen off the top end, but between like 2012 and 2016, basically up there with Usain Bolt. Um, you know, kind of got overshadowed by Bolt because I was like the end of Bolt's prime years, but Johan Blake was right there. So Johan Blake ran a 200 
in 19.26 seconds. Now, the world record is obviously Usain Bolt, 19.19, which was is an ast- it's astounding time, right? If you got running in 20, you're going your world like top end of world class. So, you know, 1926 is absurd. And he does it. There's a nice, I forget what channel has it. There's a YouTube channel. It might be it might be Total Running Productions. Um, but if you Google his name and you know, 1926, it'll, it'll probably be one of the first results where he in this particular race where he runs 19.26, his his start is bad. It's like one of his worst starts ever. Like they do the re, they, they figure out the reaction time. Like I think the normal reaction time is like 0.13 out of the blocks, something like that, 0.14. He reacted like 0.22. Like it's terrible, right? So he, he loses a tenth out, like just on reaction time. He doesn't like come out of the blocks that well, right? So he's at least like loses two tenths, right? And so, you know, the, the, I recommend this YouTube thing, YouTube video that looks delves into this because they estimate like he would have been, if he has like, what, not even a good start. If he has one of his normal, like an average start for him, because they looked at all his starts for like some that year, and like this was the absolute worst one. If he has an average start for him or like a world class sprinter, which obviously he was like top in a world class. He runs like a nineteen point one, or nineteen point oh five, or something like something ridiculous. Where you know it's like all right, well, ever we all view Usain as the greatest sprinter of all time, and that nineteen point one nine, such an iconic number. Obviously, it's repetitive, so it's easy to remember, but it's also just so fast. But it's like if if that was you know nineteen point one zero, you know, by this other sprinter, you know, how much does our opinion of him change? Yeah. You know, how much? How does our lore of you know sprinting change? And it's just a, a very interesting thing. Like we've talked about other events in baseball and whatnot, where you have you know uh, Bill Buckner. Like if Bill Buckner doesn't fumble that ground ball like how do we view you know what it goes on in that series blah 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 blah. you know there's you know something like that where there's multiple innings it's i think it's harder to tell you know because it's like who knows what would happen but in the race it's like okay all, all he has to do is run the exact same race but start better and he, he breaks the world record it tells you too like what what uh you know, what a small difference in that sport right how how little of of margin of error there is and how much you can actually make up. Imagine if he had a regular start, right? And in, in his actual running, is he faster than Bolt, right? But he just got a bad start. His, they figured out the top speed, his top speed down the home stretch. I think I want to say, now don't quote me down this, but I think his last hundred in that, in that particular 200 is the fastest hundred, like in it within a 200 ever. Yeah. Um, this is the fastest split. And it's like top speed, obviously, because of that is like the highest ever. And I think Bolt, like, I think Bolt gets credit too because he's so consistent, right? He's always running those types of races where he's very consistent throughout his efforts. Um, I think that's why he, you know, widely regarded as you know such a absolute. I want to see I'm amazing runner, running. right? We know he's just so consistent all the time. All right, so yeah, yeah. So his his reaction time was zero point two six nine, was the slowest in the nine man field. <laughs> Yeah, most 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 reaction times are around 0.16. I want to see. All right, what was his last hundred split? I'm looking this up because now I'm like really split. Because it was so. I mean, imagine that you're you're not only is your reaction time bad, but you still almost set the world record. Yeah. No, Blake's no, no, it's good. Nine point. All right, so it looks like what I, the first result I'm seeing here is somewhere be his last hundred is somewhere between nine point oh six and nine point one two. I mean that that is flying, yeah, flying. I mean, it's just the whole to be able to hold that speed for that far is just absurd. So yeah, just, I know that has nothing to do with. I mean, this when did he run this race? It's like years and years ago. Yeah, it's like 2009, 2010, somewhere around there. 2011, maybe. Yeah. But yeah, I always think it's interesting for that stuff. Um, so yeah, track and field championships were great. Uh, the other person uh, whose name I will forget, I sh- should have left. I should have pulled up my notes from on the Facebook group, which I'll do now. But the 400 meter winner uh, for the men dropped a 1385, which is, you know, if you understand 400 
meter times going sub 44 is absurdly fast. And this guy, he's a NCA and T guy. NCA and T had a really good meet. What was his time? Um, 43.85. I'm looking at it. Randolph Ross. So congrats to him. He ran third fastest time in collegiate history, right? So it's, that's a no joke time. I mean, the world records, what? 43.02, oh, oh, one. It's not like just over 43 because 40, no one's broken the 43 second barrier yet. Yeah. I'm happy to run a four, uh, 200 in that time. <laughs> right. 45 seconds. <laughs> but, uh, that'd be an interesting race, right? Line up. Like me, okay, you have to run a 200 in the same time that he runs a 400 and see who wins. I would love that. <laughs> that would be hilarious. Yeah. Yeah, so so great race by him. They ended up his NCAA and T, NCAA and T ended up winning the 4x, four men's 4x4. Four four. He had, he ran a great leg on that. I think he was his, he was the second leg, this Randolph Ross. He ran a phenomenal leg because they were behind, and he ended up, I think, putting them in the lead. He could pass like two or three teams. So he had a great meet. Uh, let's see. Anyone else I want to mention? Yeah, I mean the the guy from USC, their 800 meter runner, uh, Jewett. I don't know if I've heard his his first name, but Jewett. He, you know, he was a he, were, he was in their four by four as well, but he won the 800. And he was interesting because he, I was like guys that run from the front, so I thought you know he ran pretty much from the front, which is cool. But he uh, on his in the final turn, he in the straightaway to the finish line, he did a nice little little subtle trick. Uh, that guys like to do is that, you know, he comes off on, he's got a guy right behind him. So it's him and this other guy uh, for first and second. So this guy's on his shoulder. As I come off the turn, he's like right on the rail. As he's like running down the home straight, he does a slow drift out in the lane too, you know, to kind of push as, cause the guy's trying to pass on the outside. So he just pushes him, you know, and I don't know if the guy would have made the pass anyway. It was going to be tight. You know, cause they were both kind of locking up down that home stretch. Uh, and I think he, that guy that was trying to pass was locking up a little bit more, but I think it would have been tight. Uh, but he, you know, because he had to run a little bit further and couldn't quite, you know, get shoulder to shoulder with them because it was kind of pushing out. It, uh, it didn't work out. Now it's interesting in the four by four, because that was later. I think he, he got scouted because he tried the same thing when on his leg, he comes around for the 400. So it's just the one lap. He comes around I'm walking, so I'm watching him because I, I noticed that on his 800. I'm like, I wonder if he does the same thing on this four by four. And he does because he's running the anchor leg and he kind of starts to drift in, as he comes off the bend to get it. But some some guy must have tr- knew that he was going to do that and he snuck on, on in on the inside. Um, so just interesting. Uh, you know, I, I think we've all probably been in races where someone's cutting you off and you're getting pissed because <laughs> I'm sure that guy that got cut off was not, not exactly thrilled about the move he pulled, but. I guess I guess that's running. I don't know. I don't know if you not allowed to push people down technically. Yeah. So. What do they say in uh, car racing? If it's not rubbing. It's not racing or something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's not, not rubbing. It's not racing. Yeah, but that, I mean, at that level too, you got to look for advantages, right? <laughs> Apparently, if it, worked, if it worked and they didn't say anything, it worked. <laughs> yeah, and so um, the uh, overall LSU won the men's. I don't know who won the women's overall meets. Uh, LSU did it on the strength of Laird uh, winning the hundred and he got second in the 200. You know, so he had, a, he had a very good weekend. I think they think they won the four by one as well. And then they're, I, for, I forgot to write down his name. They're high jumper, high jumper and long jumper. Who's just absurd. <laughs> he won the high jump by four inches. <laughs> like eh, how? That's like how? the guy I sent you. Like you watch these people jump and you're like, what is happening? Yeah. I mean, how do you, how do you, how do you, you're competing against the other people that are world, you know, really good at the that. best collegiate yeah. athletes <laughs> and you win by four inches, like yeah. not in a long jump, long jump, right. There's got 29 feet, right. So four inches you can see, but in a high jump, there's only less than eight feet of room. Like in, you know, the first five don't really count. Cause I could jump over. Well, I could jump over five feet, but like four, maybe three and a half, four feet. I can, I can like kind of tumble over or something. <laughs> Right, so it don't even really count, right? So you only get really got like three or four feet of, you know, actual where people are going to be in that range. So yeah, I mean, he was. I know he tried seven ten, like seven foot ten. Like, That's insane. The, the my favorite shot was the officials. You know, are going over to set you know like set the bar. And they're standing underneath the bar, so it's above their heads. You can't even see the bar. It's that far above their heads. It's not like 
oh, you know, six feet's very high, right? So, but if I was there, yes, I could walk underneath it, but you would see the bar, like, because it's just above my head, because I'm like just under 5'10, right? 7'10, like, there's, there's clearance, right? You could almost put your arms up and not hit the bar. Yeah. Like, it's absurd. So, I, I imagine he'll probably make the U.S. Olympic team. I mean, I, we hope. Yeah. <laughs> we hope he's on our team. I mean, as I as I as I was tell my I was tell my parent my dad when I saw that him him and my brothers on Saturday, I was like explaining that I watched the, the track and field championships, and I was telling them like, look, he did his first jump at seven foot two, right? which which is absurd in and of itself. He missed. He missed his opener, like his first jump. He actually missed. And I'm like, well, the, as you not just put it, he probably missed because the competition starts, right? And just like, you know, weightlifting or powerlifting, like, you know, they're, they're going to incrementally go up. And so you you start once they get to your you know opener, yeah. whether it's, you know, a weight or in this case, a height. It had, the competition had been going for an hour before he took his first jump. Yeah. I don't think people realize that too about like, like a weightlifting competition, right? So, and I've seen people sit in, where everyone's finished their first and second and some third attempts before their starting weight is even called, right? So you, you have to plan out the warm up based on possible attempts, you know? So it's, it, I'm sure it's very similar to that, right? You got to plan out your warm up, and he's just sitting around for like an hour and then he's got to. Yeah. Jump. And I mean, in that case, it's not like there's like, you know, at least in weightlifting and, you know, powerlifting, there's like usually a warm up room. So there's like racks yeah. you can, you know, work up to so you can be ready to go when you go out there. There's not like a second high jump pit. Yeah. Right. You know, it's like the, the high jump pit is the high jump pit. That's right. It. That's it. So, you know, congrats to him. He was phenomenal. You know, it was always cool to watch. You know, the field, the field athletes get less press, obviously. But, you know, I do think the coverage was good. You know, they would, they did show a lot of the field stuff, at least the you know, top three for each, all the events. So you know, hats off to ESPN for, Giving those uh, phenomenal athletes a little bit of coverage, which is good. I feel like uh, LSU is usually up there, right? With yeah, the, they, the they, they had a really good meet. Yeah, they're they, usually they were, one they of were the very good. Top schools, I guess we could say, with the track and field. Um, so yeah, kudos to them too for winning it. Yeah, excellent, excellent work. Um, what else happened? What, what else? What do you want to talk about, Kenny? Um, I mean, I think we'd be. I think we'd be making a mistake leaving out what the Iron Cowboy did or finished this uh, this week with his hundredth triathlon in a hundred days. Um, what did he finish? I I I, 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 I I think I follow him on something. Yeah, but I I, only, I see his post very infrequently. So and to top it off, he did another one on the <laughs> after he did a hundred and one <laughs> try just just to be sure. I guess. Yeah, uh, I mean. Talk about incredible human performances. <laughs> I don't even know how to quantify it. Just to think about that, doing it every day for 50 days was impressive when he did it on Netflix when I watched that. Yeah, I was about to say, I remember like he did it a while, did something a while ago because I know like I think Alex was communicating with him a little bit about some stuff. And uh, yeah, 100 in 100, 101, I guess, in 100 days is absurd it, it really is like I, I was trying to think about it after like what what do we even have to compare to that as far as like things humans have done that are just mind-boggling um you know not only the physical side but the mental aspect yeah i'd say to, to, to me it's more the mental i mean yeah. I, th- this, I think i think it's a you know a testament obviously you know he learned so much when he did the i guess what 50 and 50 days or it was like 40 i don't know like there was one i remember that was like people was, were like well it was like a hurricane the one day because he, yeah, did, it, he, he did it in a, a different state every day so he's traveling in that's what in it was doing, yeah yeah and he he like had to go on a treadmill or something yeah there was something happened where yeah. like they couldn't do it and like everyone was like oh it doesn't count like yeah. oh, <laughs> the other, like we well, still did the distance and like yes. and, you know <laughs> Like, like everyone was like, "Oh, it's it's bullshit now because you only yeah. did forty nine point nine nine nine. I would count it if I did it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> like, like somehow that makes it made it shit. I don't know. Yeah, just like what? <laughs> oh, sorry, that's all good. Um, so yeah, I just don't know even how to. Because you think about like with, with something like that, training wise, the race is just become part of his training to get better. Yeah, the races are the training. Yeah, like that's that's it. You're 
you're getting better by doing it, you know, and adapting more and more every day. But mentally, yeah, I mean, gosh. I, yeah, I mean, really, I think, you know, the only the stuff you're doing outside of that is just to help promote recovery. That's yeah. all you're, you know, doing after that. It's just the ta- it's so taxing on your body. You know, and I mean, I, I think it's a testament, obviously, to how efficient he's gotten at it. I don't think you can do that if you're not extremely efficient at all three modalities. Um, you know, to, to be able to put up that much time on the bike, you know, on the run and in the swim, you just have to be very, very efficient. Um, yeah. You know, and you can see that, it, it, you know, with, you know, his ability to do it, you know, and to manage fatigue in such a way and know what days, like, okay, maybe. You know, maybe I need to try and move through the swim a little faster today or not. Did I just take it easier on the swim or the bike or the run? Uh, man, you know, managing not only that, but also managing just, I'll, I'll call it body maintenance, right? So, you know, obviously that's a lot of time in shoes, right? Yeah. And putting a lot of force through your feet over, you know, like most people that do an Ironman, their feet are not looking great the next day. Um, for, for for at least a week, right? <laughs> yeah, right. And, yeah. you know, so obviously skin, you know, sort of feet care, um, you know, making sure they're staying healthy. Cause obviously if you can't stand it, you're not going to be able to do yeah. Iron Man. What do you think about nutrition too? Like he got some flack cause he was doing a uh, IV stuff to get more nutrients in his body and stuff, which I was like, what, is, who cares? Right. <laughs> He's trying to get some calories in without physically having to eat all the time. Cause imagine how much food you got to consume to just keep a base level of nutrition in your body. Yeah. Uh, so, so many moving parts to doing that. I, I mean, so again, I think it's, I think people, so this is me t- talking about the community around triathlons is, I don't know if it's changed, but I know like when he was first did his 50 States and things, I mean, I don't, I don't want to knock the community too much, but like, I don't know. I seemed like people were focused on like, it had to be 50 States in 50 days. And anything less than that was in like an absolute failure. Yeah. Like, in ignoring the fact that for any one person, one Iron Man, like a half Iron Man, is phenomenal, mm-hmm. like phenomenal, right? A full Iron Man, like beyond phenomenal. And the guy's doing some number of them more than one, right? In multiple consecutive days, right? Like, like it boggles my mind that people get like, well, yeah, but he used an IV. Like you could <laughs> effing do it with an IV. Like you're not going to do one yeah. with an IV, right? Like. Uh, of all the, like, how are you going to pick on that? Like, how of the, you know, and, and the sum total of everything he did, 99.9% of it is phenomenal, you know, and, like, he, yes, he used an IV. Like, that, why why is that the thing you pick on? Like, how sad is your life? That is the thing you're going to pull out of this, this news story. Yeah. You know, and yeah, people will, you know, people always look for a way to, like, well, he did early. He or she, you know, whatever. It's kind of like when you see a guy deadlift a thousand pounds and, like, well, he was using straps, you know, right? <laughs> It's like, okay, well, pounds. let's take the straps away and have him deadlift versus your deadlift. Yeah. See who wins. <laughs> it's, uh, it's so funny to to hear the technicalities, right? Like, yeah, well, but the the old yeah. but or but well, <laughs> yeah. I just and I couldn't wrap. A, I said I seriously sat and thought about it for a while. Like, what what do we have to even compare to that? Like, you know, I've watched some cool documentaries. I, I watched the. Uh, <laughs> One called Losing Sight of Shore, where a group of ladies rowed across the Pacific Ocean, right? So that was like... Oh, wow. I yeah. Know. I mean, talk about the mental side and the physical side. I mean, just... Yeah. Wait. I mean, I think it would have to be something like that where you're doing it for con- so many consecutive days. Yeah. Right? Because, I mean, I think there's there's obviously... you know, Obviously, his times aren't of importance here, right? The fact he's no. finishing... Within, but, but know, they're I still guess, probably like, faster than. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely yeah. right. Like I, I would not be able to fish because I, I think he. I, I'm sure he probably did them within like the Ironman cutoff times, right? Yeah, just to and, say and he did it. And it's just to think too, like, and if he does finish faster, he gets more time to recover. So there is a little incentive there, I would think. Yeah. Just to get exactly. a little more rest and food, right? Get your food in, and get off your feet. You know, absolutely yeah. no movement after that. But it, it yeah, to think about it. And I've seen the guys do that, you know, the, I don't know if you've ever seen the Appalachian Trail ones where they're, you know, just walking for, you know, it seems like forever or kind of, you know, the, the hiking, the running, uh, just stuff like that where just phenomenal feats over time, right? Over a yeah. month or two of, <laughs> I, f- I forget how long when they, the, the ladies rode across the Pacific 
there was a point where they were moving like less than a mile a day because of the ocean currents and they were rowing oh, all day. All right. Talk about just mentally breaking. Brutal. Yeah. Brutal. It was all the, the ocean currents were meeting in this one spot in the Pacific ocean and they were just barely moving. Uh, and it took months and months and months for them to get across. Right. But in that sense too, it was, it was a group of them, right. They were each rowing at a time, taking breaks. This guy did his, you know, by himself, right? It was just him. You now he did have runners with him. He did have bikers with him, swimmers. I get that. Um, so yeah, I was just that was the only thing I could think of. Like those two things, I saw the the guy trying to break the Appalachian Trail record, and and these ladies swim or it's not swimming, uh, rowing across you know the Pacific Ocean. But I couldn't really think of anything else that would even just fit. no. Every everything that is coming to mind to me is too short. I mean, I hate to say it, like I'm thinking of like a. Was it Zach Bittner's hundred a hundred mile like it like run with, at seven minute miles or whatever that was that was on like a year or two ago? Yeah, which is you know like crazy. I think of that, but that's like oh wait, that's like you know that's insane, but it's only like a day. Yeah, right, like in day or two, you know. So it's like okay, you know, the actual feat, the feat is crazy, right? The 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 feat of what he did is so impressive with the times in a hundred miles, but then to me it's just the longevity that separates yeah like it just <laughs> yeah there's nothing i can think of that you know other than the stuff the stuff you mentioned i think is about, about the most equivalent because there's such a that huge mental component of how do you stay how do you bring yourself to do it every day when you wake up right yeah. like I, I mean the rowing one i can almost see because if you don't row i guess you die like i, I mean i guess you have that like what i, mean, yeah, I don't well, know if they had a support boat or something well too for me it's like with the rowing one, you're, you're, you're in the middle of the ocean, right? With, wow. you're sleeping on a boat, right? You're going to the bathroom on a boat. You're showering on a boat, right? <laughs> I feel like conditions, and they built this rowing boat. It, it's such a fascinating documentary to get everything. What's seen. the name of the documentary again for myself and my or the listeners? It's called Losing Sight of Shore. Even, oh even the beginning, they, they left and they had to come back like right away. It was like a rough start. Uh, they changed up one person. I think it was in Hawaii, I believe. They dropped someone off and picked up another rower. Um, but just to me, the mental side of being stuck in this boat, right? And just, you know, you're in the middle of the ocean, right? So, at least at least with a triathlon, you're, you can go to sleep in a bed and you can relax, yeah. right? And, you're and, and every day looks different, right? Yeah, like, and you're, all, I mean, you're on land, right? <laughs> yeah. You think about all the things in the ocean and all the things that can go wrong with storms and sharks and whatever else is out there. You know, and these these ladies are out there just doing it. So uh, nine months and they covered eight thousand miles. Yeah, that, that was stops it. in Hawaii and Samoa. Yeah, that's insane. And I all think right, I'm, they, I'm gonna have to watch that. They finished in Australia, I believe, was where they. Yeah, they started it. in yeah. San Francisco. I think they yeah. said here. So that that was like the only real thing that I could think of that made sense i guess to, to even talk about in the same sentence of what the iron cowboy did um but yeah i mean just a testament to what humans can do <laughs> yeah so iron cowboy congrats to you and your yeah. accomplishment we are overly impressed here we don't care that you use an iv we're happy you use an iv <laughs> yeah i don't care that you use a treadmill or elliptical i forget what it was the one day you honestly in my opinion you could have injected every drug and steroid known to man and i still would be extremely impressed yeah i, I still, still would... been like wow that's phenomenal how, yeah. did, how did he do that i still wouldn't be able to do it either <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. It's Not just me. Crazy. uh i guess anything else i'm trying to think what else happened those are all the things i had yeah that, that was i mean with the basketball stuff uh College men's college world series is whittling down to the final teams now. Yeah, I, was say, I know Arkansas got upset. They were they were a favorite. They were like yeah. ranked number one, weren't they? I I believe they were the number one team. I think I have to relook, but I'm, per, I'm not like ninety nine percent sure yeah. I saw that they were number one team. And so because the only I, that was the only reason I noted it, it was like oh ESPN was like Arkansas gets number one. Gets Arkansas upset, gets yeah. upset. Oklahoma did like, oh. end up winning the women's college world series. They came all the way back and won. Um, Congrats to them. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and Texas made it into the World Series. I actually I have a client, nutrition client. Her son is a pitcher on Texas, uh, so that's oh, that's cool. awesome. Yeah, I've been trying to follow them a little bit, just because her her son is in there. So very cool. Um, but yeah, that was it. I, I mean, some cool stuff happening this weekend. And, uh, 
you know, it's going to playoffs are going to get more interesting, right? We'll be down to the Eastern and Western conference finals soon, very soon. Yeah. Um, probably, probably by close to our next episode. Yeah. I would say by the end of this week, we should know a couple of them at least. Uh, I believe, I don't know if there's games tonight. I have to look, but it may be tonight or tomorrow. Um, but yeah, it, it should, it should be known. Well, we know the Suns are in right there. One yeah. of the teams and, uh, We'll see that that Brooklyn series will be interesting now. So, yeah, especially if neither Harden or Kyrie can come back in. So. Yeah, and then are yeah, they so we've got go ahead sorry. more NBA Finals or more NBA playoffs, and I th- I want to say USA Track and Field Championships or Olympic Trials. Sorry, start. I want to say this upcoming weekend. It's very soon. It's not, if not this upcoming weekend, it's the next weekend. So those are upcoming. You know, so if you're interested in track and field, I know I I. I talk a lot about track and field on this, on this show because it's an Olympic year. So it's rare that we get a chance to talk about it. Yeah. Why not? In other years. (laughs) There's a lot going on right now. It's a cool sport too. I I love those athletes. I think they're phenomenal. They don't get enough credit for what they do for sure. No. No, Kenny, if someone wanted to work with you for coaching, I know you specialize in sort of CrossFit and Olympic weightlifting. How could they do that? Um, Well, we're starting that right very soon. Well, I'm accepting clients now through Complete Human Performance. Um, so they could reach out to Complete Human Performance or you. Uh, and um, yeah, just let me know. I, I can get you started whenever you're ready. Yeah. Uh, then you can, of course, follow Kenny on yeah, Instagram. My, my Instagram, at- kbarber39. I remembered it this time. I was about to say, I was going to say it for you because I was, I remember. <laughs> uh, you, you remember it better than me. Yeah, there you go. You can follow me on Instagram at Durasio Anthony. You can follow CHP at Complete Human Performance. If you if you do want coaching, you can obviously email me. Whether you want to work with Kenny or myself, I can get, put you in touch with the right person. Uh, Anthony dot Durasio at Complete Human Performance dot com. I usually leave it down below in the description. Uh, in our Instagrams are down below in the description. Of course, uh, if you want, could share or like this video uh, and subscribe, we would greatly appreciate. You should see more stuff coming from us in the future and uh, we'd love to grow this little show of ours and keep talking and if you have comments about what you want us to discuss like if you really were like man i really want to hear you guys talk about hockey i can't promise we'll talk about hockey but (laughs) i might we can at least mention hockey um neither one of us is a huge hockey person but we can look into it so you know put that in the comments you know like hey talk about you know so-and-so sport and uh we'll probably we can at least look into it or mention it be like why we're not going to talk about it Kenny, thanks for coming on, as always. Yeah, man, my pleasure. All right, we'll see you guys next week. All right, see you.